And we're back. Hello. It, it's been a little while. It has been a little while, and we apologize. Life has gotten in the way of everything, as usual. You know, sometimes things just happen. Yeah. So, as an apology, we're going to open two packs today. Yes. Yes. What should we start with? Um, why don't we start with yours? All right. So my pack is a little bit unique because it is cube. It is cube. Before we open packs, we haven't been here in a while. Why why don't we like reintroduce ourselves just a little bit? Right. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Phil. Hello, Phil. Uh I'm Nick. Um as you may remember from our uh, previous uh podcast um phil plays the more eternal formats and i play um standard and limited usually uh so usually when we talk about cards from uh packs we'll be talking about them more towards the uh like formats that we play so we may have like different opinions because some cards are better in other formats than than others yeah the good example of that is bathe in dragon fire yes yes it was great in cons block draft. It is garbage in eternal formats. Pretty much, except with draft. Except with cube, we're talking about it in draft because that's all you do with cube. Yes, that is correct. All right, this cube will be drafting in a couple months. Yeah, we're and hopefully we will do that on podcast. Um, we're still figuring out how to uh, how to make sure that we can film it all and make sure everything goes smoothly. But uh, you will. You will see that. All right, let's open this pack of cube. Let's do it. Our card. All right. Is lightning helix. Okay. Lightning helix deals three damage to target creature or player, and you gain three life for one red and one white. Nice, nice. I can I can see that being being decent. Being yeah, it pretty decent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our second card is Ethercast Knight. Okay. Which is a 1 3 Exalted for one in the blue. Artifact I, creature. I do like I do like Exalted. The Exalted deck is in this cube, by the way. So. Ooh, that's wonderful. Yes. I actually really enjoy Exalted. I enjoy. Um, oh, I'll talk about it later, but I, I made it on Exalted Standard deck. Um, our next card is Runes of the Deuce. Okay. It is an enchant. It's an enchantment aura. So enchant creature. As long as enchanted creature is red, it has plus one plus one and gains double strike. Okay. As long as it's uh, green, it has plus one plus one and has trap. Okay. Clarify this for me. If it's a red green creature, it gets both right. Plus two plus two double strike trample. Okay. For four green red. Okay. Okay. Uh, green or red, rather. Or green or red. Okay. Yeah. So C C C M T five. Okay. Okay. Um. Our next card is. What set is this? Oh, Arabian Nights. Is El Hajjaj. Okay. Which is. Why is this in here? <laughs> I, I think I put it in as a joke. <laughs> right. It's <laughs> it's a one one life link for three. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember why this is in the cube. I don't know either. Interesting. So, sorry. <laughs> oh, and this is actually one of my cards that I play a bunch, which is Nip Gwillian. She is a 1-1 one, one hag for black for one black or white okay. with lifelink. Wow, that actually sounds... Okay. She's a combo piece with an enchantment that is like Runes of the Deuce, but one mana. Okay. Where she becomes a 4-4 four, four lifelink. Turn 2. I can see how that would be very good. Mm-hmm. Next we have a card that was a combo in one of my first decks. Okay. Which is Stonehorn Dignitary. Oh. Yeah. It is a 1-4 for 3 and a white. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent skips his or her next combat phase. It's doable because you can keep blinking it. Yes, that's true, and then they can just never attack. Mm-hmm. Wah, wah. The card is one of Nick's favorites. It okay. is Goblin Arsonist. Ooh, I do like Goblin Arsonist. 
one one for one red when it may have it deal one damage to a creature or player. Put that together with like a goblin grenade. Oh yeah, yeah, super good. Next card is Terastodon. Okay. Which is a 9-9 for 6 green green. When it enters the battlefield, destroy up, you may destroy up to 3 target non-creature permanents. For each permanent destroyed this way, its controller gets a 3-3 green elephant creature token onto the battlefield. So, if there's something you don't need, you can send this guy in a 9-9 for 8 with 3 elephants. Or you can kill your opponent's things and give them an elephant instead. I mean, I guess... You could even, like, depending on late game, like, you obviously have eight land by this point. If you know you don't have, like, anything else that needs more than, like, five land, just sack three lands to it. Comes <laughs> in as a 9-9 nine, nine with an extra three, three, threes. That's stupid. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is in my ramp commander deck. Okay. And I use them to politic a bunch. That makes sense. I'm like, hey, that hasn't done anything for you since, like, turn two. Would you like an elephant? <laughs> Understandable. Of course, in my ramp deck, I'm casting this in, like, turn five. Yeah. Uh, and then our next card is Sitchin Time. Oh. Which is a sorcery for one blue-red. Flip a coin. If you win the flip, take next turn after this one. Nice, nice. I always enjoy cards that have, like, flip a coin or, uh-huh. like, do something like that. Because it, it kind of... I don't know. It it brings the game out of the cards a little bit. It makes it just a little bit more wonky. Our next card is Goblin Slide. Okay. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may pay one mana. If you do, put a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token with haste onto the battlefield. The goblin deck is also in this cube. Yeah, yeah. I assume this is a this is an enchantment, right? So it just yes. sticks around for okay. two and, for two and a red. Nice, nice. That's always fun. Like, I'm going to burn you and get a goblin. It's in my goblin deck. And then we have Peregrine Mask. Okay. Which is an equipment that you play for one, equips for two. A equipped creature has Defender, Flying, and First Strike. And we have one of my personal favorites, which is Cruel Ultimatum. Oh. Which is a sorcery for blue, blue, red, red, black, black, black. Yeah. Target opponent sacrifices a creature, discards three cards, and loses five life. You return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand, draw three cards, and gain five life. Yep. That's a thing. (laughs) Then we have Legion Loyalist. Okay. Which is a 1-1 goblin soldier that casts for one red and has haste. Whenever Legion Loyalist and at least two other creatures attack, creatures you control gain first strike and trample until end of turn, and can't be blocked uh, by creature tokens this turn. Ooh. Mm-hmm. That's good. Battalion is real nice. Yeah. And then we have Feud Killer's Verdict. Okay. Which is a tribal sorcery giant for four white white. You gain ten life. Then if you have more life than your opponent, put a five five giant warrior creature token onto the battlefield. I can see that being very nice. Mm-hmm. And we have a card that is currently in standard. Oh. Which is Whirler Rogue. Whirler Rogue! I love Whirler Rogue! He's in your standard deck, isn't he, right? Yeah, he's in my Thopter standard. Nice. Um, so it's... Four of them in my Thopter standard. A 2-2 two, two for two blue-blue. A human rogue artificer. Yep. When it enters the battlefield, put two 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature tokens of flying onto the battlefield. Tap two artifacts you control. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. Yeah, so... um, Real quick... Because this was something I, I had to ask a judge about, um, the Thopters that come into play with Whirler Rogue, um, because they're not using their own ability, they can actually be tapped the turn that they mm-hmm. come into play to make something unblockable. So you can play Whirler Rogue, tap the two Thopters that come in with him, and then anything on your board state besides Whirler Rogue can attack unblockable. It's super nice. Yeah. So what's your first pick? Um, I'm either going to go with Whirler Rogue, because I really like that card, or I'm going to go with the uh, Goblin Battalion. Um, the Thopter deck is also in the cube, by the way. So. Yeah. And I, I do love my Thopters. I'm going to go with either Nip Gwillian or Lightning Helix, probably. I need to take El Hajjaj of this. 
Maybe, maybe you replace it with a better one, one. Or something that's a better three drop. Just a different card. Just anything. Replace it with Ornithopter. And now we're going to open a second pack for your viewing pleasure. Listening yeah. pleasure. Pleasure. Um, <laughs> Alright, so I went to pick up singles today, and I picked up a uh, Saviors of Kamigawa pack. Did you go to pick a pot singles? In, <laughs> in, in my area. Yeah, yes. in your area. <laughs> it did. I actually made that joke um, while I was at the card store, and the guy just kind of looked at me funny and was like, okay. And I was um, like, oh, I guess my pun wasn't very funny. I drove past the um, the smaller card store in town. Yeah. They had um, on their board, hot Valentine's Day singles, get them here. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Okay, here we go. Saviors of Kamigawa. Alright, first card. Oppressive Will. Um, it is an instant for two generic and one blue. Counter target spell, unless its controller plays one for each card in your hand. I can see this being quite a good counter spell. Sorry, that's... Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's not... The cost isn't great? Yeah, yeah. It is It is a three-drop um, counterspell, but theoretically, depending on like what you have in your hand, it could either be really good or really bad. Like, if you're top-decking this, <laughs> that sucks. It's like, unless you pay I... zero. Yeah, but I mean... It could be really good. It's kind of a situational, decent card. Well, in my in my blue deck, um, I don't have maximum hand size. True, and if depending on like, uh, um, I could see it being good. Say you have like six mana open, you play like a draw spell, and then counter something. So then they have to like, you know, they're gonna have to pay like a decent amount. Mm-hmm. You can see that being good. Yeah, for a common, sure. Yeah, yeah. All right. Next card, Elder Pine of Jukai. Uh, two generic and a green for a creature spirit. Uh, when you play a spirit or arcane spell, reveal top three cards of your library. Put all land cards revealed this way into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. It also has Soul Shift uh -huh. 2 and... It is a 2-1. Soul Shift, right? Yeah. It sounds okay. It just, never really worked out. It, it never really did. Can you can you refresh us on yeah, Shift? Yeah. Um, soul Shift is whenever this creature dies, you may search your... Um, you may return target spirit card with converted mana cost X or less, whatever X on Soul Shift is. So in this case, 2. Yeah. From your graveyard to your hand. Like, that sounds really good. In theory. But it never functioned properly. Yeah. Which is kind of a bummer. Also, the art on this is weird. Yeah. Here. What I even did... is that? Like, I see it on, on Gatherer, but... Oh, yeah, I don't... There's, like, bugs coming out of its mouth? And, like, a tongue? I think? I don't know. Is this, like, some 7th generation Pokemon? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> not bad. The yeah. the ability is really good. You got some decent, like, land draw. Yeah. Uh, next card, Kami of the Empty Graves. Oh, uh, Kami. Kami. Uh, mm. Three generic and a black for a 4-1 creature spirit with Soul Shift 3. That That's all it is. That seems... I can see this functioning actually pretty well in black, because one, you have, it's going to trade up for something, or it's going to hit for four. And it's going to die. And then it's going to die, and then you're going to get something back. So it's basically like you're going to either hit for four and then trade up for something, or just trade up for something and then get a creature back from the graveyard, which in black... I can see being good. If you were to take off one of those generic mana, 
what kills me with this card is it's four. Yeah, it is a four drop. It's writing, if you're wondering, is 1.5 stars on the gatherer. Oh, no. All right. Uh, next card. Tori Watchward. Uh, Tori is spelled with two eyes, just so you know. Ah, she's uh, pretty hot, then. Yeah, yeah, you never know. Um, four generic and one white for a 3-3 three, three creature spirit with vigilance and soul shift four. The art is also very weird. Like, the Kami of the Empty Graves art was kind of cool. I actually really like that art. The Skilla Ghost. Yeah, the Skilla Ghost. The Oppressive Will art was kind of cool, too. Because it was just like, I'm going to, like, electrocute the shit out of you. All right, so Tori Watchward, Vigilant, Soul Shift, 3-3. I feel like it'd be better, like, if it had Flying... I can see it being actually, like, a really decent card. I feel like it'd be better if, again, drop the mana cost. Yeah, yeah. If it was... I mean, if it was a 3-drop with Vigilance... A 3-3 three, three for 3 with Vigilance and Soul Shift 4, I can see that being pretty decent. You want to fix this card? Just get rid of Soul Shift, make it all your creatures gain Vigilance. I can see that also being very good. All right. Barrel down Sokenzan. Do you need me to spell Sokenzan for no, you? No, I got you. Oh, yay. I uh, just typed in the, world, the word barrel. Really? And it just popped up? Well, yeah, there were two cards that start with barrel. I guess that makes sense. Um, this is another one with weird art. Do these all have weird... Nope. Not all of them do. Okay, um, this is a Arcane Instant for two generic and one red with... Sweep, return any number of mountains you control to their owner's hand. Barrel down Soken, Zen, deals damage to target creature equal to twice the number of mountains you return this way. I can see this card being very good in a landfall deck. Like, um, right now in um, the new uh, Battle for Zendikar, Oath of the Gatewatch, there's a lot of uh, really good green-red landfall. If you made, like, a modern landfall deck and put this in there, I could see that being actually really decent. Because it's not only removal, it's going to trigger landfall for a decent amount of turns. Like, consistently. So, here's an idea. Okay. Red-white landfall deck. Admonition Angel. This is true. That would also work. Like, I'm sorry, did you want all your things exiled? (laughs) Okay. Uh, Next one, Descendant of Soramaro. Okay, um, three generic and one blue for a two-three human wizard creature. Um, with one generic and a blue, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of cards in your hand, then put them back in any order. This is actually, I think, kind of decent. But- Again, I think it would be better if it was a three-drop. Still, you're, like, gonna control your draws for the next few turns. Yeah. Um, I prefer it be Scry. I would put, um, like in a commander deck, I'd put Cryptic Analyt in, in instead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Cryptic Analyt is a 1-4 for the same cost, which comes to the battlefield, Scry 1, then Scry 2, then Scry 3. Although the nice thing about this one is that you can do it at any time. You can yeah. also do it on your opponent's turn, which is cool. Um, and this one, it is a 2-3, so it kind of blocks, and it kind of hits. Mm-hmm. So. It can get know. some damage, sort of. Yeah, it can get some damage. I can I can see it being okay. Alright, next one. Obro Breeze Caller. It is a 1-1 one, one creature merfolk, moonfolk wizard for one generic and one blue with flying. And the ability to generic return land you control to its owner's hand. Untap target land. Huh. Interesting. Like a really bad blue arbor elf. Yeah, this is kind of strange. Again, it would like work really well in landfall, but there's like no blue landfall. So uh, this card needs to. It, it needs something. It. it yeah. 
I was kind of excited, like a one one with flying. I was like, maybe it'll have some cool, like activated ability. Y- you know what you can play for that one for that one generic and one blue though. What storm crow? So what's even the point? This is true. I mean, best card in Magic. This one's actually kind of cool. Promised Kanushi. That sounds like a Japanese dish. Yeah, it does. Um, so, it's a 1-1 one, one for uh, 1 green mana. Uh, it's a human druid with Soul Shift 7. I feel like this can make Soul Shift work. Well, no, here's, because... what, here's the inherent problem with Soul Shift. Mm-hmm. Was that it needed to be in your bin. Like, you play this... I don't know, turn 7, turn 8, just as like a, oh, and by the way, I also play Promise Kanushi. And then, like, they attack with something, chump block with the Kanushi, and then you get, like, any creature in your graveyard back. Well, that's why you use Flying Arm Blockable. I mean, yeah, but still. Like, I can, I can see that being, like, a decent, like, End of game, like, I need something, drop the Kanushi, block with it, and then get, like, something decent back from your bin that's already been, like, removed. Yeah. It's or, not the worst card. No, yeah, I'd say one of the better commons that we've but seen so far. I'd say it's the best card in this pack. Yeah, so far. Um, the Also, like, if you were playing in, like, a green-black and you had, like, black that was, like, cycling cards into your graveyard. Oh, yeah, dredge. Yeah, then you can just be like, okay, and I get anything I want back now. You know what else is in this set? Hmm. One with nothing. What is that? Uh, one black, discard your hand. Okay. That's... It only works in dredge, and it's bad in dredge. Don't play it, ever. Yeah, um, okay. All right, moving on. Shinin of Fierce Chill. It is a spirit creature for four generic and one black. Um, it is a 3 2. Uh, it can't block. And it has channel for one and one black. Discard Shinin of Chill. Fierce Chill. Target creature can't block this turn. This is. This is probably the worst card in this pack that we've seen. This is garbage. This is, this is literal crap. <laughs> it's just like you see someone playing this card and you're like, either you have a crazy strategy that like you're really trying to throw me off of or you just don't know what you're doing. It's like, I mean, do you want anything else? <laughs> literally anything. This is something you get past like, as the last like, 15th draft pick, and you're like, oh, no, not this crap. No, this is like, you're you're drafting Kamigawa, because you're an idiot, apparently. I mean, yeah. And then you get, like, a forest and this, and you're taking yeah. the forest. <laughs> I mean, you can use the forest. Oh, I'm not even going to put that with the other cards. Yeah. Oh, that put was... Put in the trash where it belongs. <laughs> that was so bad. Uh, Give it to I a think, poor, underprivileged magic player. I think I think I would take the Gurmag Angler over the Shenan of Fierce Chill. Gurmag Angler can do something. can <laughs> do anything. Uh, oh, but it's a 3-2 for 5 that can't block. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's like, 3-2 for 5, that's too busted. We need to have a, have a drawback. I'm a hundred... I'm 100% sure the only time you would ever play this card is for its channel cost. Yeah. I mean, it, it's flavorful. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I can... It's t- like possessing something. Yeah. It's chilling them with fear. It's just bad. I can see it only ever being used for its channel cost. Yeah. And I don't understand why they even made it a creature. I mean, what, you would make it like... One and a black target creature can't block this turn? Yeah, like, why would you even make a creature? Like, just put, make it like, Fierce Chill, one and a black, target creature can't block this turn, like, instant, like, a spirit instant. I mean, it's still not great. It's still not great, but, like, it's better than this. 
Okay, anyway, move, oh, now I'm like in a bad mood. If you're ever playing this as a creature... Just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just, oh, no. I, I, I know what we do with this. Um, mail it to Wedge. Alright, next card. Oh, we're almost into the, um, uncommons. Oof. Um, next card, Curtain of Light. It is an instant for one generic and one white. Attacking, target attacking unblocked creature becomes blocked. Draw a card. I'm confused. <laughs> does it change? Like, does it just, like, end up, like, target, like, unblock Attacking oh. unblocked creature is, like, just doesn't deal damage Okay, I, I, I'm looking at the, um, the, ju the uh, judge rulings. Okay. So, you have to play this after the declared blocker step. Okay. Um... And it's basically a zero zero. Blocking. Okay. But what if it has trample? Then you take full damage. Okay. So it basically just creates a zero zero attacking or that's blocking target unblocked attacking creature. Yes. Okay. And you draw a card. And you get to draw a card. It's that's not bad, it's actually. Decent, yeah. Yeah. Like that's cool. Okay. All right, next one. Into the fray. Also, the the art on that card was cool. On curtain of light. Yeah, yeah, it was. It's like a like butterfly spirit, just getting it shit wrecked by light. Into the fray. This one has some interesting art. Yeah, I like how the guy in the background's just like, get, just go. Do you see him? And stay out. <laughs> yeah. Don't let the door hit you in the behind. Alright, um, this is an arcane instant for one red. Uh, target creature attacks this turn if able. Uh, splice into arcane for one red. Uh, as you play an arcane spell, you may reveal this card from your hand to, and pay its splice cost if you do add this card's effect to that spell. I mean, I like splice to, onto arcane, but not... no. I mean, I can kind of see this being like a into the fray. Now I'm going to splice a bunch of into, uh, splice onto arcane onto this, yeah, because it's like cheap. But I mean, eh. uh, either shockwave. It is a instant Ooh. three generic and one white. Choose one. Tap all spirits or tap all non spirits. I used this in my uh, spirit a while ago. Yeah, this is actually like pretty decent. Yeah, even now. Because you can just play it and no one's running spirits, so you're like, uh, tap all your creatures? Well, I mean, there are the Innistrad spirits. True, but, like, how many people are... Like, how often do you come up against Innistrad spirits? Um, in my mono-white, I have the Nimbus of Bliss. So, oh. yeah. Ooh, so... So that's one creature that's untapped. Yeah. No! Like, ah, I have this 1-1 one, one flying. Wah, wah. That probably attacked last turn because that's what makes it effective. You know what's a better version of this though? Although it, it doesn't affect spirits. What? Crux of Fate. <laughs> True. It's True. similar, but just much better. All right, Kashi Tribe Elite two three Snake Warrior creature for one generic green. Legendary snakes you control can't, can't be the target of spells or abilities. And whenever Kashi Tribe Elite deals combat damage to a creature, tap that creature and it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. What? I like this. I actually really like this. I don't know of any legendary snakes. Um. I feel like there must be. There are. Oh. Okay, wait, wait. Is it legendary creatures that are also snakes? Um. It would be legendary creature subtype snake. Okay. Because there's uh, Kazeto Orochi Archmage, which is a legendary creature snake wizard, which I think would count. There's, um... Yeah, um, there are 11. Yeah, so there's actually, like, it's an amount. Like, I could see that actually okay. Um, anyone who played during... Uh, what was the snake deck a thing? It kind of looks like it. Yeah, let us know if Snake Deck was actually a thing during Kamigawa Block. 
Yeah, because that's actually kind of cool. Not, not I want to make like a snake commander. That'd be actually really cool. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Whoa. Never mind. I'll come back to this. Yeah. But I found something really bonkers. Anyway, okay. Uh, card Oni of Wild Places. Uh, it is a 6 5 demon spirit creature for 5 generic and 1 red with haste. And at the beginning of your upkeep, return a red creature you control to its owner's hand. Eh, not bad. Although, like, um, it works best in a deck that has some sort of um, creatures with entrance effects. Yeah. No, and that's, that's how this works. Yes. <laughs> I win. Like, that would be decent. Like, that thing from um, Estrad, the one where en- when it enters the battlefield, take control of target creature. Yeah, that'd yeah. be perfect. Or even um, the uh, the look at my abs card from uh, Origins. <laughs> the look at my abs. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the uh, It's like a luring captain or something like that. I don't know. It's red, but whenever it enters the battlefield, you take control of target creature. All right. I wish those cards said target creature or player. <laughs> All right. Here's our rare. Ooh. And this card is weird. It's Hidetsugu's second right. It's an instant for three generic and one red. If target player has exactly <laughs> ten life, <laughs> Hidetsugu's second right deals ten damage to that player. It's like, what's your life total? Eleven? Pass the turn. <laughs> Like, I can see this being, like, really effective, like, turn four, like, win condition. But at the same time, you have to, like, construct their life total, like, perfectly. There's... <laughs> you're like... <laughs> this is just so weird. <laughs> They're like, uh, what's your life total? Eleven? Uh, pin you for one. Second right, I win. Oh, that's so weird. I really want to make a deck where that goes off. Oh, just try to get them to exactly (laughs) ten. You're like, uh, I'll have you gain five life, and then I'll have you gain, like, lose three, and then... It's like, what are you even doing? It's like, just just let it happen. Just, just... Ooh, ooh, synergy, synergy. Yeah. You play Soren Markov... I was just thinking that. His minus three target opponent's life total becomes ten. <laughs> and then you're like, uh, second right, you lose ten, I win. That'd be perfect. Um, okay, alright. Going back to this crazy thing that I found. Apparently this was a turn. Ooh, this was like a thing in Champions of Kamigawa. The Orochi Eggwalker, uh, Egg Watcher and Shidako's b- brood mistress. The Egg Watcher, two generic and one green. Uh, it's a 1-1, one, one, and um, it has the ability, two generic and one green, tap the Egg Watcher, put a 1-1 one, one green snake creature token onto play. If you control ten or more creatures, flip Orochi Egg Walker, Watcher into Shidako Broodmistress, which gets... Uh, the ability, one green, sack a creature, target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. Whoa. Yeah. The, this is a weird looking card. I've, I've never seen a card like this, and it just kind of blew my mind. Anyway. Oh, by the way? Yes. You could sell that card for 25 cents. Uh, the second right? Yeah, the second right for 25 cents. Nice. Which means that I would get 50 cents for it in store credit. So I guess that means, if if you were to sell it for 25 cents straight up, that means, like, small gum on you, I guess. Woo! Yeah. Okay, Uh, speaking of selling cards, um, I bought a Modern Masters 2015 booster, and I pulled a Mox Opal, and I sold it for store credit, but ever since then, I have just been sitting on my store credit and buying cards with that. So this past month, I have bought a bunch of cards and not actually spent any money. 
How much did you sell Mox Opal for? Forty dollars. It doubles in value in store credit, does it? Uh, not doubles. It's like plus a percentage. Um, I think for cash it was um thirty dollars, and then um because of the percentage in store credit, I got it forty dollars of store credit. Huh. Up here, you can sell it for twenty dollars. I also. Oh, so Nick, first pick. Oh, out of this? Yes. Um, probably either Kashi Tribal Elite, because I think that's kind of super dope, or the second right. You first pick the second right? I think so. And just get a bunch of life gain and burn? Yeah, I think I think that's what I would try and do. I- I'd build the snake deck. That makes sense. Yeah, I think people listening can't see. But I, I purchased a Chandra Pop doll. Ooh. Using Mox Opal, and she's very well, cute. The people listening probably can see, they just can't see us. Okay, you're correct. Sorry. If you are blind uh, and listening to us, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that was that was kind of a tasteless joke. But yeah, um, if you don't know, you can buy uh, Magic Planeswalker pop dolls and places, and they're adorable. They are adorable. Um, however, they aren't much value. True, they're not much value, they're $10.00. And you can't, they have, like, no resale value. But, I mean, they have aesthetic value of looking cute. I'll probably end up buying Jace. Do it. I found a Nissa. So, what are we talking about for the, the rest of our our time here? So, first of all, I say as we're, like, 40 minutes in, we're back. Planning on doing twice-weekly podcasts. Um, we'll be doing a magic podcast every week. And then a second day of a week, we'll be having... Um, Alternating between the nickname podcast, back by popular demand of one. Of of one. Which I think was one of us. Uh, Project Peanuts. Oh! Hey, thanks, Project Peanuts. And, um, we'll be alternating to a nerd cast every other Friday. Yeah! Where we'll talk yeah. about video games and animus and comic animus. books. Pokemans. Pokemans. Um, and then we'll be also having, like, update videos on things going on in the Nerdverse, such as where and when you can get event legendaries for the year 20 of Pokemon. Woo! Um, and also, we are going to GP Portland. Yes, that is in August. August 12th to the 14th. We're excited to go. And we're going to discuss some magic things today. Yes, we are. So, um, real quick, before we get into anything else, just because I'm a little selfish about this, okay. um, we... Earlier in your um, in your cube pack, you mentioned Exalted, um, and I wanted to bring up my Exalted Thopter deck, which is not a very competitive deck, but it's a <laughs> fun deck to play. Um, basically, the premise of this deck is to get a stupid amount of Thopters, put a Sigil of Valor on one of them, and attack with it. Um, this means, and, and bear with me now, that you can theoretically swing in with a 2020 Thopter with flying. And I find that very entertaining. How often does it work? I've gotten it to go off about half of the time. Other times, I've won using Impact Tremors, um, which is kind of a trashy enchantment, which is any time a creature enters the battlefield under your control, uh, deals one image to target opponent. Um, this means cards that bring in Thopters deal extra damage, so I usually cast Whirler Rogue for three damage, um, and then am able to swing in with an unblockable Exalted Thopter, um, which means that usually turn four, I'm swinging at least four, uh, five or six damage plus hitting for three so it's usually about eight to nine damage turn four if everything goes correctly which i think is pretty decent oh exalted oh exalted oh hey while i'm thinking about it we are having a tournament okay Um, your prize for this year is nothing but we are having our march magic madness tournament this year oh yes yeah we talked about this are you into basketball? Probably not, because you're listening to Magic Podcasts, but that's okay, because neither are we. Yeah, no, not really, not, except in March. Yeah, except in March. We started doing this... Yeah, it was like a $5 buy-in, and we were like, yeah, why not? And we got hooked. Yeah, and it's been a lot of fun. 
like there was one day we literally both skipped school just to watch games. Yeah, definitely have done that before. So definitely check it out. Get in on this. It, it'll be a good time for all. And the winner gets the pride of winning. It's uh, my favorite pride. Um, hopefully in the future we'll be doing um, like magic-based uh, prizes depending on um, the amount of people participating um, and the amount of uh, money in general like, yes. floating around. Um, prizes may range from like a few booster packs to a fat pack to a box. Um, at least that's our hope. Hopefully you get as excited about it as us, and we can get you hooked on it, and then we can do it as a yearly thing. Yeah. Um, we've been doing it yearly just in our small group. Um, usually the prize is like five bucks, um, which is like nothing really, but you feel good. Last year was you versus me for nothing. This is true, except the amount of trash talk for for no prize was a, a little excessive. But yeah, it's fun. It's um, I mean, obviously we don't watch a ton of college basketball. This is true. I mean, I follow uh, ESPN, so I know there have been, like, upsets every weekend. So, yeah, just pick a random team. Honestly, you'll have as good of luck as anybody. Yeah, basically. I mean, realistically, I, I've i looked at the statistics. There's been years that I've, like, done research and, like, looked into it and, like, calculated everything out, like, using statistics and whatever, and it all just goes to hell by, like the third game. A couple of years ago, I had skipped the morning to watch tournament games. I came to school at, like, noon. Mm-hmm. Or no, I came in at 11.30, because I would go in for choir and then leave again. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I come in, and I'm... And you're, like, looking down, and I'm like, oh, right, you pick Duke. Oh, right. The year they lost in the first round. I picked Duke. They had... Their stats were so good. My heart was broken. And then I picked Duke again the next year because I was like, "No, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be dedicated." And they lost again. Yeah. Round. Basketball talk on a nerd podcast. Let's talk about pets. Let's talk about pets, specifically pet cards. Yes, yes. What are your pet cards that you try real hard to make work in decks, or <laughs> put in decks, even though you have much better options? Um. Okay. So, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about when we are saying, like, limited and eternal formats, basically, like, the formats that I play are um, standard because I enjoy, like, finding, like, one or two cards that are interesting and standard and, like, trying to make them, like, a thing, even though everyone else is playing net decks. Um... (laughs) But I also really enjoy draft. Um, it's a little bit more expensive. Um, usually, it's about like ten dollars draft, um, but you walk away with at least forty-five cards. Um, and in draft, currently the um, the format is uh, two booster packs of Oath of the Gatewatch and one booster pack of Battle for Zendikar. Um, and the cards, there's three cards that I've been trying really hard to make work in draft, and they worked one time for me, but the last time they did not work. And they did not work really bad. Um, the first card is Loam Larva. It's a uh, 1-3 uh, for one generic and one green. That's an insect, because I really enjoy the insect cards. And when it enters the battlefield, you may search for for basic land card, reveal it, then shuffle your library and put that card on top of it. So it's basically fixing as a like, creature card. But it really doesn't work. I thought it would, especially because I've, uh, like, last draft I was playing a uh, landfall deck. Lone Lover really helped a few times, but it really didn't do as much work as I thought it would. Um, last deck, with landfall, um, my strategy was turn one Scythe Leopard, turn two play a Mountain... Uh, trigger Landfall with Scythe Leopard, play um, Brute Strength uh, on Scythe Leopard, swing for five, turn two, which was pretty decent. Um, And then about turn six, I had nothing. I I was like, I consistently got people down to like below five and then just like could not finish. And that kind of hurt. 
but Lone Larva did nothing for me there. Um, another card that I've been trying really well, hard... If I may, here's the issue with Lone Larva for me. Yeah. It doesn't put you ahead of curve. This is true. Which is what a dig card should do. If if it put it into your hand, yeah, that's fine. But it just... It gives you it a dead draw, basically. It. Yeah. I put it... It's in my commander deck because my commander deck is two colors. And so just in case... Plus, if nothing else, um, it is a 1-3 for 2, which is like, eh, okay. This is actually probably much better in Commander than any other format. I think so. Um, that's So I like found a home for it, and I was like, you can just stay there. Um, another card I've been trying really hard to make word, work is Silent Skimmer. It's a 0-4 um, Eldrazi draw for 3 generic and a black. It has Void and Flying... And whenever it attacks, defending layer, defending player loses two life. It sounds so good because you can bump it. Like if you're playing um, like a green black Eldrazi and you put like a a brute strength on Silent Skimmer, like you're automatically going to be doing two and then hitting for three. Like it sounds so good. It just has never worked. For right. Me. So it's 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 a zero four flying, and at worst it. It is uh, too unblockable. I think my problem is other people have a lot of flying, and so I keep it open as a blocker, and so never really attack with it. And it's not the best blocker because it doesn't have a power. So, like, it's decent. It just has never worked for me. Um, the one, the one pet card I have that has consistently done a lot of work for me in draft. All right, let's hear it. Is Sky Scour. It is a 1-2 Flying Eldrazi drone for one generic and one black. And whenever you cast a colorless spell, it gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. This card has actually done so much for me. Because not only are there, like, a lot of colorless instants, so you can, like, block something with it, and then it'll be like, oh, before damage, I play all these colorless instants that are super cheap. Um, then Sky Scour becomes, like, a 5-2 and kills your thing, and I get all these, like, cool abilities. Or, you can, like, anytime you play, like, another Eldrazi drone, he gets pumped, and then you can swing for two. Either way, it's still a 1-2 with flying on turn two, which I think is pretty good. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, that that is the one pet card I have that has been consistently working for me. And I have a playset of them, and one of them is foil, and it makes me really happy. Uh, so I have tons of pet cards... One of them I finally found a deck for. That card is Scrambleverse. God, Scrambleverse. So the deck it's currently in is a Chaos deck. Okay. It's a commander deck that's purpose is not to win, <laughs> but to make the board state as confusing as possible. Wow. So Scrambleverse is six red red. For each non-land permanent, choose a player at random. Then each player gains control of each permanent for which he was chosen. Untap the permanents. It's ridiculous. It's just rude. I really like it, but it's not a good card. No, it's really not. Another pet card of mine is called Nevermore. I've never made it work in a deck because it just doesn't. Pretty much. It's an enchantment for one white white. As it enters the battlefield, name an on-land card. That card can't be cast. I think the problem with this is that it would work really well in, like, a standard or limited format where you know what the other person's playing. Yeah. You're like, all right, like, they're playing, like, Mardu Dragons, like, Culligan. You can't, you can never play Culligan. And then they're like, well, this sucks. But in, in, like, a constructed format or, like, even, like, a modern format where you're not 100% sure, like, that they're going to have something in their deck. Well, the idea is um, sideboard tech in modern. But I don't know, in, in Commander, there are so many answers that this never gets to resolve properly. Yeah, that makes sense. Can you technically use this on someone's Commander? You can, but they always like, okay. <laughs> um, no. Disenchant. Uh, and then there's one that, there are better options for it, but I love it, so it's always in my in my burn deck. Yeah. Which is called Book Burning. It's a sorcery for one in the red. It's really confusingly worded. Oh, so it's this one. It's, unless a player has Book Burning deal six damage to him or her, put the top six cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. But I mean, that's fine. It's like, 
one in the red, either six damage or mill six. It's confusing because a lot of people accidentally add a comma after unless a player has book burning. Yeah. So someone was playing one of my decks this was in, and they're like, wait. Okay, so if anyone has... So do either of you guys have book burning? Because if not, <laughs> you take six damage and mill six cards. Like, <laughs> no. You're like, that's, that's not how it works. It just... It just does it. That's, that's just sweet. So, it's so badly worded. Because I, w- I found a forum about this, too. It's like, wait, so if you have book burning? But yeah, that is my big red pet card. Also notably Elshnorn, but that's just good. Yeah, that's just a stupid card. She is in my, She's the commander of my Death and Taxes white deck. Yeah, I know. And I hate it. Oh, speaking of hate, you segued quite nicely despite not knowing what we're about to talk about. What are the decks that you hate playing against? For most of you listening, you know that there are, like, different descriptions of magic players. Like, there's spikes who are just like, I'm going to win at any cost. Blah, 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 blah. That kind of stuff. Um, I'm a person who really enjoys making decks. Mm -hmm. And, like, I enjoy almost the creative process of making them and, like, being able to play with these, like, kind of, like, wonky creative decks almost bugs me when I play decks that don't let me play. A.K.A. Blue. (laughs) Or or my Mono White. True. Or Mono White. For those of you unfamiliar, my Mono White has a bunch of cards that make it so you can play one spell a turn. Only one spell. Yeah. And untap one land a turn. Only one land. It's kind of stupid. It's dumb. So basically, you hate control. Pretty much. Like, basically, con- control. And um, probably also, um, to an extent, I also dislike net decking. Mm-hmm. Just because like, a lot of people use that as like a... Like, I, I understand the reason that people do net decking. And like that makes sense to me, but at the same time, like, as somebody who really enjoys not neck decking, yeah, like, I feel like it it almost, like, takes a bit out of the game for those people. Well, it bugs me is that it's almost expected that you're net decking when you go to a GP or something like that. That's true, yeah. Or, especially, like, um, a lot of standard players enjoy net decking. Because they're, like, decks that are proven to win. And it's not necessarily that there's anything wrong with it. Like, it wins. Yeah. Yeah, just... I mean, the decks are always really good. It's just, for me, I almost... I kind of feel bad for the other people because it's, like, they're missing out on part of the game. Yeah, I, like, I would never build a net deck. I mean, it'd be, it'd be fun to, to play one because then you're like, all right, like, I know all these combos are going to work. And, like, you know everything, like, is going to go off with it. And so it's, like, almost like a guaranteed, like, thing to do. But at the same time... See, I like playing a lot of decks. I just, I like seeing cards. But I hate Infect. I feel like Infect is one of those things that a lot of people dislike. And you either, like, love it or you completely hate it. Because Infect is one of those things that I really want to work. Oh, it works. Like, I just, like, I, I want to be able to play an Infect deck, mostly for the fact that I want to be able to be, like, uh, in, <laughs> you can have three poison counters and have people just be like, you're playing Infect, I'm done. Well, like, new Phyrexia draft, I love Infect there, I love playing Infect. I've been really wanting to do a new Phyrexia draft, but because I just, I... go on. I haven't been able to find anyone to do it with. Because I play so much Commander, though, mm-hmm. and a Commander deck is literally the worst. Well, okay, how do how does the Infect rule work for Commander? Is it's it always st- 10. Encounters? Wow. I know you're going to hate me for this, but I really want to make an Infect Commander deck. If you do, this is this was balances out, though. If you make an Infect deck, you're automatically the target. Like, it's not even one of the things where, like, you're playing Control. Because mm-hmm. then, then people don't want to kill you because you can help them. Yeah, that's true. But when you're playing, like, Infect, it's just like, oh, okay. It's like, four, it's four to one now. Soul. But yeah, Infect's really the only one I hate playing against. 
I'd say control is like like I enjoy playing against it when it's like in a commander format because yeah. it's kind of it's kind of fun that way. But just one on one control, I don't like. It's just my personal. I like to be able to like play my cards and like have my deck like work the way I want it to work. And like I enjoy watching other people's deck do that too because it's kind of especially when they're like creative with it. And I just feel like control is kind of shitty. Yeah, I also dislike um, <coughs> decks that are only combo because it's like okay your combo doesn't go off, then you aren't even really playing. I don't know. A lot of people don't like when people are playing Control and Commander. Yeah. The only reason I kind of like it is because, like you said, it, like, kind of can help you at the same time. Like, if somebody is, like, about to go off with, like, a crazy combo that just, like, ruins the game, then <laughs> the one Control player is like, nope! <laughs> oh, well, um, we had this one situation where we were playing Commander, and this one guy was wrecking us with Shieldred. Uh-huh. And nobody had any answers? You were in this game. Yes, And for, like, cr- five turns, no one had any answers, and then, like, Swords of Plowshares. Yeah. That that was sad. I didn't enjoy that. And let's move on to our last topic, which is Unexpected Heroes. Unexpected Heroes. Okay. A card that you may have put in your deck at some point. Okay. That has That's saved it. your life, despite not being in there for that purpose. Yeah. Um, that actually happens a little bit in draft, like, quite a bit, and I didn't think that it would, because I assumed, like, whenever you play, like, draft, you're like, oh, it's gonna be fine, like, everything is gonna, gonna work out for you, like, the way that you assume it is. Um, one card that people kind of put off in draft, which is kind of confusing to me, but has been, like, one of those heroes for me, is Benthic Infiltrator. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah. It's a like 1 4, I think, for uh, two generic and a blue. Uh, it's a Eldrazi drone with um, Devoid, um, but it cannot be blocked. Um, so I played it in a uh, red blue Eldrazi deck and just used all the red spells to pump it and then was like consistently swinging for like eight unblockable every turn. And, like, that wasn't what I was going to do, but then it, that's, like, what I did, and that just, like, became my win condition. Hey, if it works, it works. Yeah, that's true. Um, another one that has kind of saved me, Lava Step Raider. Another one of those that you're kind of, like, it's a, it's a one-two for a red. It's just a little goblin warrior. It triggers, uh, Surge. The best thing I have found for this card Drop a Lava Step Raider, drop a Goblin Free Runner, uh, which has Sergeant Menace. So now, turn three, now you have two Goblins out. Um, next turn, uh, swing with the Goblin Free Runner and pump into Lava Step Raider. So now you're swinging with a, uh, two three twos. one of them has Menace. That's not a fun thing to play against. Yeah. Yeah. This thing's actually alright. Um, so do you have any cards like that in your standard deck that save you randomly? Mostly, like, the burn spells are the ones that come in clutch <laughs> for me. Uh, I don't have a lot of them in there because I, I took most of them out to um, put in pump spells for my thopters or to create spells that gave me thopters. Usually, every once in a while, like, I'll come up against something that I just, like, can't deal with, and then I'll be like, burn that. So, for those of you that don't know, I have ten commander decks, and some cards in there have saved my life despite not being in there for any good reason. Yeah, yeah. Um, last night, actually, I was playing a game. I was running red-white aggro burn, uh, and my commander is Gisela Blade of Gold Knight. Yeah. And what she does, she's a 5-5 flying for a strike for 7. And um, any damage dealt to your opponents or anything they control is double, and any damage dealt to you or source you control is um, half. So I play her, and my opponent steals her. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, I'm dead. And I top deck this old obscure enchantment named Pariah. And what Pariah does is any damage dealt to you is dealt to is dealt to tar- uh, enchanted creature. So I um throw Pariah on my commander, and he he swung for um the person I was playing gets played Mizzix. So he has that thing that gives him a five one lightning thing every turn. So he swung for ten the previous turn. Yeah. Um, and my field is magma, which is a four four for five that you can pay one. Sacrifice a creature, deal one damage, start creature or player. This Viashino, which is like whenever a spell you control deals damage, you get a one, you get two one two one one uh, red white soldier creature tokens. 
and the lightning thing, because I get it, but it can't attack him. So what I do is, I, sac I play Pariah on my commander, sacrifice the lightning thing to do one damage to his commander. Yeah. Because it does two to me because it's doubled, then it goes back to him and it's half, so it's one. And mm -hmm. then I fireball myself for five to kill my commander, and then I win the next turn. So yeah, Pariah has saved me multiple... Pariah has saved me in that deck once... And then I have a life yeah. in deck. And there's a card called Celestial Convergence. And that's in there also as a combo piece. Um, oh, the reason Pariah is in my red-white deck is it combos with Stuffy Doll. Yeah. Which is a broken combo. But I have another combo piece in my life gain deck, which is Celestial Convergence. Uh-huh. Enters the battlefield with seven counters on it. Uh, remove one at each upkeep, of each of your upkeeps. When there are no more counters on it, person with the highest life total wins the game. So I'm in a one-on-one -on -one thing. We've killed the rest of our pod. I'm against one player. And I'm untouchable. Uh-huh. Because I can block all of his things. I have uh, the, like, 1-1 one, one that you gain life whenever a creature enters and has pro-black and pro-red. So I have that out. And he can't hit me at all. But he has blockers. So I can't that get to him. Sucks. So we're in a stalemate. So I'm at 198 yeah. life. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm playing a three-color life gain deck in command. Yeah. <laughs> so I get Celestial Convergence. Uh, that's, a, that's a combo with a card called Vampire Hexmage. Yeah. Yeah. What Hexmage does is you sacrifice it to remove all counters from target permanent, so it's busted. Yeah. But I get the uh, convergence, not the Hexmage, and I literally just stand there blocking his commander with my pro, pro black thing <laughs> for eight turns. Oh my and god. And just let the clock go off. That's dumb. And then lastly, um, I have a mono blue Thassa deck. Yeah. And it has Jace Architect of Thought. Yeah. I forgot what his alt was. So when he goes off, which is, I think, minus eight, it's search your library and each opponent's library for a card. Until end of turn, you may play that card without playing its mana cost. So I had that out really early in the game, because it's a f it's a four cost. So I'm playing one-on-one. -on -one. So I have Jace out. I alt him to kill him, because I need it now. Search yeah. my library for omniscience, and then instantly dump my hand, and then I just win. Because... I still had mana, and the only thing I needed mana for was Ludwig's Abomination. So I was able to, like, get it out in two turns, because I just kept piling counters on it. Jace Architect of Thought, digging for Omniscience is insane. Um. I got Charmbreaker Devil off my opponent, and god, that's a good card. Well, so dumb. Oh. So that's gonna do it for our return podcast. Yeah, um, real quick, I'm sorry for all the noise previously uh, on my end. Uh, my roommate came in and was getting ready for something. I don't know. Um, but that's the joys of living with another human being. If you would like the noise removed, contribute to our Patreon. Because oh. one of our stretch goals is to kill Nick's roommate. I mean, um... <laughs> one I of mean, a he's a very nice guy, and we're actually really good friends. Uh, it's just, he's not a quiet human being. One of our stretch goals is to get an office. Yeah, get an office and better equipment. Um, we recently acquired a camera... Um, which we can shoot in 180p, <coughs> or 1080p, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can shoot in 180p. Woo, no, 1080p. Um, so uh, next time that we give you video, we, it will be in uh, HD. <laughs> um, and we're also we working on acquiring a ceiling-mounted tripod to film magic games. Yes, that way you'll be able to, to see what we're doing a little easier than uh, like a weirdly angled camera. But uh, yeah, we are working on getting better equipment. Um, we are working on two podcasts a week. Hopefully, if you enjoy our content, you will subscribe. Um, check out our Patreon if you want to fund our new equipment. Also, getting us off an office will make our podcast live. Yes, that will be a lot of fun. Because we'll be uh, closer to each other. I think that's all I have. Yeah, so until next time, thank you for watching us, and be sure to subscribe and check us out. Yeah. Thank Please. you so much. Yeah, bye. Bye.